guys, attorney Mark Victor here with the Attorneys for Freedom law firm. And today I want to talk about victimless crimes. I can't believe we still got to talk about victimless crimes. The whole idea of a victimless crime. Doesn't this seem crazy to you? What on earth are we doing with our criminal justice system for crimes that don't even have a victim. Do you know how many times I've been in court where I've said, judge, you're getting ready to sentence my client maybe to jail or prison and nobody's even mad at him. There's no victim here. Nobody's upset. Nobody's saying, hey, I've been wronged by this guy. I'm upset with this guy. Nobody's out any money. Nobody's been trespassed upon. Nobody's been hurt in any way yet. We're gonna take the power of the state or the federal government and put somebody in a cage when they haven't even violated anybody else's rights? This should obviously be a problem to you. And it should especially be a problem if you're viewing this video right now and you're a proud American, and you should be a proud American because we're supposed to be the land of the free. But how can we be the land of the free when we also lead the world in incarceration? Yeah, we're the land of the incarcerated. We have more people in jail and in prison in our country than any other civilized country in the world, whether you measure by raw numbers of people in jail and prison or whether you measure by a percentage of the population. Either way, it's a disgrace, and it's not worthy of a place that calls itself the land of the free. We gotta do more than just sing songs and stand up and salute the flag and be proud about saying we're the land of the free. We actually gotta walk the walk and be the land of the free, and there is no way to be the land of the free well, we're prosecuting victimless crimes. So what is a victimless crime? Well, a victimless crime is a crime where there's no victim. What's a victim? A victim is somebody who's been trespassed upon in some way. Somebody who's been a victim of maybe force or fraud or coercion or somebody who's at least been put at some substantial risk of those things. What do I mean by those things? Well, uh, somebody who's been a victim of force. Think of the assault case, right? Somebody who has uh, maybe been punched in the face, that's an assault. Somebody who's had their wallet stolen from them, that's been a trespass to their property. Force has been initiated against their body or their property or their money, something like that in some way. They're out something, they've been injured in some way or they've been defrauded, which is like another version of theft. They've been tricked out of giving up their money voluntarily because they were misinformed, they were intentionally misled about the facts, or they were coerced into doing something in some way. Or, as I said, they've been a victim of a substantial risk, right? None of those things that I just explained actually happened, but they're at risk. What do I mean by that? Well, take somebody who's maybe driving down the road, maybe they're drunk, maybe they're very, very drunk, they're swerving all over the place, wrong side of the road, they haven't hit anybody yet, but they're creating real victims because they've put people at risk of injury, right? There could be many such examples of this type of conduct, right? Imagine uh, somebody who wants to celebrate New Year's Eve by discharging rounds up into the air just recklessly. That's sort of classic recklessness. We don't have to wait until somebody gets injured by the, the rounds discharged from that firearm to say what this person is doing is a crime because they are victimizing other people by putting them at risk. So if you do that, fantastic, you've committed a crime and you should be prosecuted for that. And all of course, the due process rights that go along with proving up a case like that, no problem. We should be very strict about applying those. But if you haven't done that, why are we upset with you? The reason we're upset with you is because some people think that they should impose their moral views on other people. They're putting their morality into the law. What do I mean with some examples of this? Take a gambling case, for example. And of course, I'm talking about consenting adults here, right? Because it's the consenting adult who can make a decision for themselves about their body, property, money, or even time. If you're not a competent adult, well, sorry, somebody else is in charge of your decisions. You're a minor or you're an incompetent a person, you have a guardian or something. I'm not talking about that group of people. But if you're a competent adult, 
and you want to spend your money on some a gambling project where you're wagering money in exchange to win profits if something happens or doesn't happen or whatever it's your money you're a competent consenting adult we're the land of the free why on earth would gambling between and among consenting adults be a crime this is ridiculous it's a crime because it violates somebody's morality out there in the world the same can be said for euthanasia or suicide I mean, if you're a competent adult, you're in charge of your body and your money. And while I would say most people who would want to take their lives may not be competent, or many people not be competent, of course there are situations where that's exactly a rational decision to make, right? Some people are in a situation, unfortunately, where it's beyond our science to save their lives. They have some horrible medical condition. Say they have uh, ALS or some horrible disease like that, and there's no reasonable hope that they're going to live their lives and they make a rational decision for them over their lives and they want to employ a doctor to help them to do it properly so they don't suffer whose business is this besides the person involved why would we prosecute the person for hiring the doctor or the doctor for volunteering their services to help this person or, or someone who's not a doctor to help as long as this is a consenting adult a rational decision that they want to make that it violates someone else's moral code is too bad for them. We need to understand that putting morality into the law isn't consistent with freedom. Sure, moral views are important. We should argue about them. We should try to persuade each other to act morally. But to put them into the law is to impose and enforce your morals on everybody else. And guess what? We don't all agree on morality. Same could be said for the drug war. Some people think it's immoral for other competent adults to take certain drugs. Okay, good for them. They should convince those people not to take their drugs. Look, I can make a case that eating certain foods could be unhealthy. Some people think eating dairy is unhealthy or eating uh, animal protein is unhealthy. Maybe it is unhealthy, but who makes the decision to do something unhealthy? This should be the competent adult making the decision for their own body. Who cares whether I think what you're doing is immoral? I could try to persuade you all day long. You could try to persuade me. That's consistent with freedom. But when we run to the government and put our moral views, try to get them into the law, what we're doing now is imposing our morality on another person. Look, we only got one of two choices here. Choice number one, we all fight forever with each other on who's getting to impose their morality on everybody else. Because we don't all agree, right? We can fight forever to see if we can get legislation passed to impose our moral views on everybody else. This is a war of all against all. And that's kind of where we are now in terms of victimless crimes and putting their morality into law. Do we want this battle forever? Or choice two, we all say, look, Let's agree to take our morality out of the law. If you don't initiate force or fraud or coercion or create substantial risks to other people, those are victim crimes. If you don't do that, then your morality is your morality. It should stay out of the law. That way, even moral views that I agree with, you and I may agree on certain morality, but if we want to have a civilized society, and we want to really be the land of the free, and we want to reduce the amount of people who are having their lives ruined and the moments of their lives being run off the clock while they're wasting away in cages, we need to agree to take even our morality that we agree on and get it outside of the law. Now look, to be fair, I understand and I agree that even those first things I mentioned, don't initiate force or fraud or coercion, sure, these are moral views. I'll concede that, right? Saying to kill somebody is wrong, yes, that's a moral view. Saying to steal is wrong, I get it, that's a moral view. So why should those moral views be in the law? Because this is what you might call the least common denominator of morality, right? Virtually all moral codes agree. I don't care where you're coming from on the planet probably your morality says hitting another person over the head is the wrong thing to do, stealing their property, the wrong thing to do, defrauding them out of their money or something, 
wrong thing to do. This isn't very controversial. But the harder questions, the higher moral questions, like whether the right thing to do is to gamble or not, whether it's immoral to use drugs or not, or prostitution for that matter. If you're talking about consenting adults and one person wants to pay money and the other person wants to exchange sex for money, these are their decisions. These, there is no other victim here. Now, to be fair, some people will say, especially in the case of prostitution, well, there could be pimps involved. There can be force or coercion involved. Fine. If there is, then this violates the rule, right? This violates the victim rule, right? Because if there's force or fraud or coercion, there's a pimp involved in the prostitution deal, well, then we're back to a victim crime again. But if it's truly consenting adults that we're talking about and it's a voluntary transaction, the only reason to oppose it is on moral grounds, and these are the higher moral views that I think make sense for a civilized society to not put into the law. And by the way, do we really want to pull very important resources to enforce crimes away from real victim crimes like murders and rapes and robberies and burglaries and thefts and frauds and spend any of that money going after prostitution cases, gambling cases, drug cases, victimless crime type cases. This doesn't make any sense. And if you think there's not a real cost, you're not paying attention to what's going on. Because we are taking dollars away from prosecuting real victim crimes. We got no shortage of unsolved murders and rapes and robberies and burglaries and all the things I mentioned. We shouldn't even be having this discussion. Until we get all the victim crimes resolved, why are we even talking about putting victimless crimes into the law? It's not right to try to impose our higher moral views on everybody else. So, to wrap it up here, if you're excited about living in the land of the free and you want to be the land of the free, that means you got to kind of suck it up and understand that other people, competent adults, might live their lives in ways that you morally disapprove of. You may even find things that they do unhealthy or unwarranted or unwise or immoral or whatever, fine. Those are the things that interesting discussions are made of. But let's keep the criminal justice system dealing with old-fashioned victim crimes. When somebody comes into the court and says, I was wronged by this person, we'll all be better off. And we really should aspire for a free society, and this is the way to get there. This is what I sometimes call the hard questions of freedom, right? Are you big enough to recognize that other people get to live their lives in ways that you don't agree with? So long as they're not inflicting force, fraud, or coercion, or placing other people at substantial risk. If you can't do that, then you're not really for freedom at all. You're just for allowing people to do whatever it is you like to do. Are you big enough to allow people to do whatever they want to do, especially in cases where you don't agree how they use their freedom? If so, welcome to the freedom team. So anyways, if you disagree with me, and I'm sure some people will disagree with me, but that's fine. Happy to hear from you. Bring it civil, uh, bring it respectful, and you'll get the same back from me. We don't have to agree on everything. We're Americans, right? We can disagree on things and do it in a civilized way. My name is Mark Victor. I'm with the Attorneys for Freedom law firm. We're a law firm of hardcore pro-freedom attorneys, and we fight all freedom issues. We represent people in the criminal justice system. I've been doing this for 27 years. We're licensed in Arizona and in uh, Hawaii. We do represent people in other states as well, and we do lots of federal cases across the nation. So easy to get a hold of me. You can email me directly. It's just mark, M-A-R-C, at Attorneys for Freedom. I'd love to hear from you. Whether you agree or disagree, you'll get a response from me. No problem. Love to hear from you. If you do have a need for legal services, hit us up. If we can't help you, we'll tell you that. If you don't need a lawyer, we'll tell you that as well. If you do need a lawyer and you got a good case, we can put a deal together. We'd be honored to represent you. So again, check out the Attorneys for Freedom law firm at attorneysforfreedom.com. My name is Mark Victor. Thanks for listening. Yeah.